Hey everyone. I'm a white female with dark brown hair and dark brown eyes. I'm wearing a white t-shirt and a headband. And actually I'm in my childhood room because I'm visiting my mom for the summer, but you can't actually see it because I have a background set in Zoom. All right, let's get started. So today I'm going to talk about Apache Airflow at WISE how Airflow fits into this platform that we maintain internally, um, how we manage the Airflow infrastructure and the architecture itself. So first, what is WISE? Um, WISE is making international transfers instant, transparent, and eventually free. This is our mission. So we have people to get paid, get paid and pay in any currency that they like, whenever and wherever. A few numbers about WISE. So actually WISE recently changed names. It was called TransferWISE before. So you might know it by the name of TransferWISE. So we have 10 million customers around the world. Uh, we transfer or handle 4.5 billion pounds every month. Um, we save our customers 1 billion pounds every year, and we have a staff of 2,200 people. So a bit about me, I'm Alexandra Abbas, and I'm a machine learning engineer at WISE. So I'm in the machine learning platform team. We maintain and manage the platform infrastructure for data scientists. Uh, we manage infrastructure, but we also maintain and um, create software services for them. Um, I'm going to talk about how the platform looks like later. Um, I'm a big fan of Apache Airflow, actually. Uh, I'm using it for four years, let's say. Um, I also have an introductory course on Udemy about Apache Airflow, so feel free to check that out. And if you would like to reach out to me, this is my Twitter handle. So feel free to reach out there. So first I wanted to give you a, a feel or a sense of what we are using Airflow for. I asked a couple of teams to tell us uh, some use cases that they are using Airflow for. So the treasury team um, is responsible for making sure that we have enough money in our accounts all over the world and we can um, accommodate every transfer that we receive. So they mentioned this use case um, that they are using Airflow for. They monitor the liquidity and cash buffer in our system. I also have the finance team. The finance team have, has many stakeholders, BI stakeholders, so they need to generate these reports for them uh, frequently, maybe once a month, once a week, um, depending on the stake, stakeholder. So they generate Google Sheets reports to BI stakeholders. And the fraud team is responsible for spotting fraud in our system. So they are using it for fraud detection for different payment methods and different currencies. They are also using it for retraining their fraud machine learning models. So our data stack in the machine learning platform on a high level looks like this. So we use Kubernetes to host an HD, several HTTP services actually, for serving predictions. Um, this is a service that we have created. This is a custom service that we created internally. We are using Amazon SageMaker. We have recently introduced SageMaker actually um, for data science experiments and model retraining and training, and also some data processing as well, but it's quite, uh, it's in a, an early stage. Um, we are using Amazon EMR for large scale data processing and model training as well, but we are trying to migrate our training workflows to SageMaker. We are using Snowflake for, as our data warehouse and for SQL light data analysis. And um, we are using Airflow for scheduling most of our workloads. Um, we are also using Kafka for some monitoring bits um, to record the input outputs from models. Um, we are planning to expand on this initiative and we are using Looker for data visualization. So this is a high level data stack. Um, and then requirements for the machine learning platform. So I think th this will explain some of the architecture decisions that we've made um, around Airflow as well. 
So I think these are the three most important requirements that we have um, as the machine learning platform team. The first and most important one is security. So we have to minimize vulnerabilities and the chance of data breach or any kind of breach in our system. Um, the second one is the segregation of data. Because of requirements from GDPR and partner requirements, we need to guarantee rec uh, restricted access to different types of data sets, um, and data sources. So we need to create these segregated kind of environments for different data sources. Also, autonomy for teams. This is, a, I, I guess, a cultural rule in WISE that um, each team has to be functioning by themselves, so they can't rely too much on us, other than that we are provide them the infrastructure. They have to manage their own work, their own workflows and their own code base. So we need to provide them this kind of features on our platform. So this is how the machine learning platform looks like. We have a secure AWS environment, which means that um, it doesn't actually have internet. And we have a smaller environment for each team within this AWS environment. So for the marketing team, let's say, we have the SageMaker instances, this means SageMaker notebooks, SageMaker training and processing instances. We have Airflow for scheduling these jobs in SageMaker. And we have our prediction service in Kubernetes for deploying the models and then serving them in production. So we have an identical environment for each team. So I put here the marketing team and support team, but we have quite a lot of these. So the ev evolution of Airflow at WISE, we started with a single repo and a single Airflow instance. I mean, we had one in staging and one in production, but it was a single instance. We, we look at it as a single instance um, and we deployed the code from uh, one repo, the staging and production instance. So this became a really busy environment. Um, the, repo, the reports uh, became quite unmanageable. Um, this is the busiest, or this was uh, the busiest repo in um, Vice's GitHub. And also the instance became really busy with um, with a lot of incidents, like we fre frequently had to handle resource constraints and limits. Um, also, if the radius blast of an incident, like if someone read a huge data set on a worker instance, impacted everyone who, who used this Airflow instance, which is of course really bad because um, the, the radius blast of incidents was really large. So we wanted to transition into segregated airflow instances by team. So we had like this middle uh, transitioning state when we still had a single repo, but we had like different workspaces, like um, using different folder structures for each team. And then we deployed to multiple instances. And then now we have multiple repos, one for each team and multiple airflow instances, one for each team. So. This way, we can guarantee the segregation of data access. Uh, we can guarantee that the radius blast is not going to affect everyone, just that specific team. And let's look at the actual Airflow instance architecture. So we are hosting our Airflow containers on EC2 machines. We have a master EC2, which hosts these containers. It has the web server, the scheduler, Flower, and Redis. And we have worker EC2s, um, depending on the workload, one or several ones. And these workers host the Airflow worker and an exporter. So as I mentioned before, and also the metadata database is in Amazon RDS. Uh, as I mentioned before, we don't have internet access enabled in these environments. So if they want to make any calls to the outside world, then they have to go through a proxy. So we have a proxy computer for that. And also we are pulling the code changes from Artifactory, which is actually mirroring our GitHub um, to an internal Artifactory that we can use to uh, pull the code changes. And I want to talk about our infrastructure management because I think 
It's something which is quite interesting how we do it and uh, something which is not necessarily standard. So we are using Terraform for infrastructure management and we have created a reusable Terraform module um, that we can use to create these new segregated airflow environments or airflow instances. So it's really easy and quick to create a new airflow instance for a new team. So this module creates the Amazon RDS, creates a secrets manager in AWS, which holds some of the secrets uh, that the containers, the airflow containers need. It also creates the IAM role and the permissions um, for the airflow user. And it creates the EC2 machines, um, uh, one master and one worker or several other workers um, and creates the security groups and permissions that are needed for these EC2s. And it also creates buckets. So one bucket for the airflow logs and one bucket for data that people can write any data there and read any data from there. And a bit more in detail um, in the creation or infrastructure management of the EC2 machines. So we make use of the user data feature of Terraform. So user data runs when the instance is launched. So at launch time uh, or when it's rebooted, I think. So this is the steps that we run before the instance gets ready. So we install Docker, we create a user for Airflow. We create the cron jobs. So we use cron jobs for updating the user roles from a config. And we use Okta authentication, but for the user role assignment, we have a config um, created because of legacy reasons. We have a config created in our GitHub repos, and then we use that to update the user roles using a cron job. Um, we also use cron jobs to pull the data from Artifactory, uh, pull the code changes from Artifactory. And we also check if there was a change or not. And we also use this to reinstall the requirements if there is a change in the requirements file. We also pull the secrets uh, from the secrets manager in order for the containers. And then we can start the Airflow containers. So on the master instance, we start the uh, containers which should run on the master EC2 and on the worker, we start the worker container and the exporter. And pros and cons of this setup. I started with the cons. So obviously hosting uh, these containers on EC2s has uh, a lot of cons. Um, Scalability is one. So if we want to add a new worker, that's a manual step. We need to go to the Terraform config. We need to change how many workers we would like to create. We need to apply, it needs to be created. So it, it, it takes some time and also it needs human intervention. So obviously it's not auto scaling. So there is this scalability con. Also high availability. Um, recently AWS actually had like an AZ failure and some of our Airflow instances were in that AZ. So that like some of our airplanes just actually got terminated and it's not like necessarily straightforward how to um, restart or recreate or reboot these, these instances. It's not straightforward how much time it will take. Uh, it's definitely not a, a self-healing environment. So we cannot guarantee high availability of our air, airflow instances, and therefore we cannot guarantee any SLAs for our data scientists. So we cannot tell them that airflow instances will be up 99% of the time. We would like to address these in the future for sure. Uh, and some of the pros of this environment that we have, or uh, this setup. So because of this modularization of uh, our infrastructure and our Terraform, it's really easy to create a new Airflow instance, a new environment which is segregated from all the others with all the bits which are needed. It's really easy to create. Um, also, yeah, this, there are segregated environments. This is something that we worked towards um, since a couple of quarters. So we wanted to have completely segregated environments for each team because of security reasons. Um, and this is now done, and this is definitely a pro of our setup. And also secure environments. So these segregated environments guarantee that um, people cannot access each other's airflows, therefore cannot see each other's data. Um, 
also in the logs actually we have like a custom log implemented but i think that's now also available in in some new airflow release um, we have a custom logger implemented which masks any suspicious strings or uh, yeah any strings which seem like a secret or anything like that so i would say these are the pros and the cons of our setup and um, yeah, I'm not answering questions live, but uh, I'm going to answer some questions in the chat, um, in the Airflow Slack. And also feel free to reach out to me on Twitter and I'm happy to answer questions there. Um, thanks for listening. And I hope you learned something and I hope you found this talk interesting. And I hope to continue the conversation about uh, anything that I have raised in this talk and have a great Airflow Summit. Bye. <laughs>